Now that you understand why options exist, I'm going to show you ways you can trade options to make a profit. So most of your favorite companies that you use every day have stock options, and you can trade them right from your computer, cell phone, or tablet. There are two types of options. There are calls and puts. If you buy a call, you want the stock to go up. If you buy a put, you want the stock to go down. Now, since there are two sides to every market, you can also do the opposite, where you would sell the option as an opening trade and hopefully buy it back at a lower price as a closing trade. This will make more sense in a second. Option prices are based on three elements of its underlying stock. The first one is time to expiration. In the last video, we talked about how options are basically insurance, and of course you pay money for this insurance. Now, the thing about insurance is, you don't just get to pay a one-time payment and have insurance forever. You have to pay month after month to keep your insurance. So the longer you have it, the more money you will have to pay. Options are the same way. They have expiration dates for the exact same reason you have to pay monthly for car insurance. An option with 60 days until expiration might cost $500 when the option with only 30 days to expiration only costs $250. So more time equals more money. So naturally, as time passes, an option's time value will decay. This is known as time decay. Now, let's take a look at how an option's time value will decay over time. The curve will look something like this. As you can see, time decay isn't linear, it's exponential, meaning that as you get closer to expiration, time decay will rapidly speed up. The important thing for you to understand right now is that an option's time value is always decaying, 100% of the time, every day, every hour. This can be your worst enemy if you trade options the wrong way, or it can be a huge advantage if you trade them correctly, which I'll show you in the next few videos. Most stocks have options with weekly, monthly, and quarterly expirations, and you can choose whatever expiration you want to trade in. And in some of my other videos, I talk about the best expiration that provides the lowest risk and the highest returns, so be sure to check those out. So the second factor that goes into option pricing is the price of the underlying stock itself. For each stock, there are multiple options at different price increments. These are called the option strike price. The strike price is the predetermined price at which the shares of stock will be exchanged if the option is exercised. For example, if you own the stock at $125 per share, you could buy the 125 put because that's where you could sell your shares in case the stock goes lower and you need to exercise your option. So again, the strike price is simply the price that the shares of stock will be exchanged if the option is exercised. Of course, you don't have to own shares of stock to trade options, but the strike price of the option you're trading has a huge effect on what the options price will be. Let me explain. Let's say the current stock price is $125 per share. For call options, any option that has a strike price above the current stock price is referred to as out of the money. If the strike price is below the stock's price, it is referred to as in the money. And for put options, it's the exact opposite. I know this is a lot to digest right now, but soon it will become second nature. So here's an idea of what each option's price will look like with, let's say, 30 days to expiration. And just a quick note, each option contract represents 100 shares of stock. So these prices have a multiplier of 100. So, for example, if you buy one contract of the 125 call, this will actually cost you $500, not $5. So here's the thing. All out-of-the-money options have no value at expiration. Let me repeat, if an option is out of the money at the expiration date, it will be worthless. So if they won't have any value at the expiration, then why do they have value now? Because stock prices move, and there is a chance that the out of the money options could become in the money if there is still time left to expiration. Now you can see that the further out of the money an option is, the cheaper it is. That's because the likelihood of it being of any value is less than an option that is closer to the stock price, right? Because for example, this stock is more likely to get to 130 than it is to 135. And as stock prices move on a day-to-day -day basis, the option prices will also move. If the stock goes up, the calls will become more expensive and the puts will become cheaper and vice versa. 
Now, a common misconception is that you have to hold your position until the expiration. This isn't true. If you buy a call option today that expires in 30 days and the stock goes up overnight and your call option is now worth $100 more than it was when you bought it, you can sell it for a profit. The expiration date of 30 days does not mean that you have to hold the position that long. Now, you see the prices of these options with 30 days left until expiration. Let's take a look at what these option prices will look like with zero days left. You can see all out of the money options are worthless. And the in the money options are worth the difference between the stock and the strike price. This is because since there is no time left, there is no time value left on these options. This is also referred to as extrinsic value. The third and final factor that goes into option pricing is volatility. Volatility is referred to as the magnitude of a stock's price swings. Higher volatility means bigger price swings and ultimately more risk for the investor who owns stock. Since there is more risk involved, options will be more expensive. Why would the option seller not demand more money if they're taking more risk? Let me explain. I know you're probably sick of the insurance analogy by now, but let's say you are providing life insurance for two different people. The first person is overweight, smokes a pack a day, and has a medical condition. And the second person is healthy, exercises regularly, and has no signs of any life-threatening medical conditions. Now, who do you think will have to pay more for life insurance? Exactly, the person who is at more risk of dying. Now think of this person as a stock with high volatility and this one as a stock with low volatility. Now, different stocks have different volatilities, but volatility is something that moves around. A stock with low volatility now might have high volatility in the future. Volatility is much more predictable than stock prices, so if you're trading options, it's important to position yourself on the right side of volatility. This is the backbone of my trading strategy, which you'll learn about in the next few videos. And the combination of these three elements is what determines option prices.